Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about discrimination in the workplace. I've actually suffered discrimination uh, and it, was, it wasn't, well I would class it as quite bad. Um, some people might say it was really bad but I'm quite a tough cookie so I could put up with it. I worked for a private healthcare clinic back in the 90s and when I first joined, I was there for a year, and when I first joined, it was absolutely brilliant, no problem at all. I had no problems, um, everybody was quite accommodating for my disability. Although I had more sight then, I still was registered blind. My general role was to go around and weed borders, um, cut grass, and stuff like that. General maintenance outside. Now, the problem first, the problem first started about six months in. For some reason one of the employees there took a dislike to me. For what reason I don't know, our paths didn't cross very often. This particular day I was just getting ready to go home and this guy decided that he was going to confront me about my disability and it got to the point where he got quite, quite verbally nasty. Uh, he was literally calling me a faker. Um, and saying that I didn't have a disability and there was nothing wrong with me and I was just you know lazy and the things I didn't want to do because there was obviously jobs that I could not do that other people had to come and help me or do for me. He didn't see that he thought that I had full vision and he thought that I was just milking it and he was literally literally he he called me all kinds of different names, names that I can't repeat on here without getting the channel, you know, banned. And this started to go on day on day. Even when I turned up for work, you know, I'd walk through the, uh, I, I turned up probably about nine o'clock in the morning and he would be there already because he started at eight and he would literally start getting, in, laying into me big time. To the point where one day he turned around and said, okay, he said, if I hit you in the face, will you see it coming? And of course I just turned around and said, no, of course I wouldn't see it coming. And he turned around to me and said, okay, well, I'm going to smack you in the face then. See how you deal with that. Well, of course I wore glasses at the time. So I just turned away and walked away and he kept calling me a coward and everything else. And this, this onslaught of nastiness, if you like, kept going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Even his colleague, he had a colleague as well, excuse the noisy train going past, he even had a colleague that was with him and he was really, really nice and he said to him, lay off, you know, what you're doing is out of order, you're just being completely nasty, you know, there's no need for it. And he turned around and said, I don't care. He said, I can't stand him. He said, I'm going to make his life hell. And he did. To be fair, he actually did. To the point where one day I was at work. Now I couldn't fill my timesheets in because obviously I couldn't see them. So I used to check in with my boss every day, tell him what time I arrived and let him know what time I was leaving. So he would then fill in my timesheet. Well this now started getting um, rather lapsed. I had to, I kept going to my boss, oh I'll fill it in later on, I'll fill it in later on. Um, so I used to give him the times and they never got filled in. So some weeks I would get paid, some weeks I wouldn't get paid because they didn't think I was at work. Towards the end, towards the end of the year, um, I got uh, two timesheets to fill in. Now it was in April, so of course, April being quite a long month, I thought, well, you know, okay, there could be two timesheets in this month. So he just said to me, he said, I'll just sign them because that's all I had to do. He filled them in, I signed them. This is my boss, not the guy that's having a go at me. So I filled in the first, I signed the first one and he said, oh, you got the second one to sign. So I signed that and then one of the nurses come up to me because as I say, it was a private healthcare clinic. She came up to me, she said, oh, I hear you're leaving. No, news on me, am I? She said, yeah, she said, they're doing a whip round for you. She said, um, it'd be really sad to see you going, Alan. You know, any reason why you're leaving? I said, I'm not leaving. And she said, well, you are because it's uh, up on the notice board. So I went and confronted the actual guy who was running the, the outfit there, the, the top guy, 
and I said, uh, what's this about me leaving? He said, well, you signed uh, your resignation form. No, I didn't. Well, you did. He said, I've got it here in front of me in black and white. So, yeah, you did. Okay. So, of course, I had four weeks, which is a notice I had to give. And after four weeks, I left, which I was pleased about anyway, because as I say, the abuse from this particular person was getting quite nasty. And it was, you know, it's threatening to become physical. And I even told my boss that this was going on. He said, I would just ignore him. He's a bit, you know, he's a bit excitable. And, and it'll, you know, it'll all calm down. Well, of course, I left. I tried to take it to tribunal and the tribunal turned around to me um, the person, my representative, turned around to me and said there's no point Alan because if you do they're just going to deny it and they're just going to say well you signed your timesheet, yeah what well, same sheet anyway and I said well I thought it was a timesheet because that's what I was told and she turned around to me and she said but you've got to prove that in court you've actually got to stand up in front of a tribunal and actually prove that and she said they will have the best lawyers you know that you can have so she said unfortunately you've got no case so that's how I lost that. Well, I didn't even lose it because I didn't get anywhere. And it was a real shame because I did enjoy the job. Um, you know, it was my bit of freedom. I was only doing 20 hours a week, so it was only part time. But it helped. Um, it helped with my mental health because it got me out of the house. And I felt like I belonged part, you know, to the, uh, the working paternity. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. Until, obviously, all this barrage of uh, abuse started even to the point where I would actually go and because my job partly apart from cutting the grass was quiet you know weeding borders you don't need to make a noise so I would actually turn up in the middle of summer um, <clears throat> August and July I would turn up at you know six half five six o'clock in the morning to avoid this person and go home by nine o'clock you know hopefully avoiding him because I just you know I didn't want the abuse didn't want to face you know this constant barrage but unfortunately he towards the end made it his um, daily routine to come and find me deliberately and you know verbally abuse me and I honestly thought it was going to get physical at one point now I'm quite a, you know I'm quite a strong person in that sense I can shrug things off and walk away but after six months of constant 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 attacking you you know um, calling you four eyes you know I thought I was back in the playground and stuff like that and um, you know loads and loads of different you know verbal abuses and stuff like that kept coming out so to be fair i was pleased that it actually ended i think i do believe that things happen for a reason for what reason i don't know and i don't know why this guy started on me but i suppose he saw me as a disabled vulnerable person and i didn't fight back i didn't i didn't verbally call him anything i just left it as it was and it was a shame but that's just you know what people are going through even today you see these cases of people being abused whether it's through disability whether it's through racism um, or you know sexuality it's a shame that you know today that was back in the 90s the early 90s back in back today you know we should be living in a society as accepting of everybody but it still happens i've been out and i've been walking about with my guide dog and i've actually heard people say oh there we go another one that should be in the gas chamber you know this is just this is not on this is not what we should be putting up with in society today everybody has a right to live on this earth everybody has the right to feel free and feel safe but we don't disabled people like other people in this world don't feel safe and we should so please if you are being you know um what's what i'm looking for if you are being verbally abused or anything else like that get help because you as a human being do not need to put up with this no one does no one needs to put up with an onslaught of abuse whether it's physical or verbal and verbal can be just as bad as physical so all i can say is please everybody like subscribe and share this video because we need again to get this message out there that just because you're disabled it's not okay to be attacked take care see you on the next one be safe <laughs>